The average firefighter has about 1.2 million in pension, but it's nothing. Their payout's gonna be about 1.2 million. That's how much they'll get paid, but there's nothing there, it's a problem. <laughs> it was stolen. It was stolen by Wall Street. Today is 2020, right? Mm -hmm. In 10 years, 2030, two billion baby boomers across the world will retire. Japan's broke, Argentina's broke, China's broke, Italy's broke, Germany's broke. All these old guys are retiring. And the stock market, you know, I was at, I live in a fairly exclusive place in South Carolina, and I was talking to my friends there, they were, they said, oh, we love Trump, we love Trump. Stock market's at all time high, and I said, yeah, but so is our debt all time high. See, they watch the stock market, they don't watch the debt. And the repo market, the repurchase market, is the biggest, one of the biggest markets in the world. And the Fed is bailing that one out now. So the average American is watching the stock market, but not watch what's really going on. So that's why I wrote, who stole my pension? So that means retirees, their kids, taxpayers will pay for the heist. So you don't buy gold coins to make money. You Long buy term. gold coins because the dollar is gonna go down. So I don't trust the dollar. The tragedy is, which I cover in fake and who stole my pension. So you have this defined benefit, which are police officers, firefighters, and school teachers, mm -hmm. and union guys. Mm -hmm. Like the UPS drivers, <laughs> you know, they're pretty smart guys, those UPS drivers. They were getting a 5,000 a month pension they gave my haircut down to 850 a month. From 5,000? Screwed them all. The, look at my friends who are airline pilots. Lost everything. They stole the pensions. Nobody talks about it. US Air, they stole the pensions. The Teamsters, they got stolen by Wall Street. EBGC, right, Pension Benefit Guarantee, they're broke. The, the, the defined benefit, which is the DB pension plan, teachers, firefighters, school teachers. Mm -hmm. I don't have one, you probably don't have one. No. That was the industrial age pension plan, my father's pension plan. The PBGC was to back it up. Today, as we talk, if they had to bail out the defined benefit pension, it's anywhere from $9 trillion to $17 trillion shortfall. Look at CalPERS, California State Pension, $1 trillion underwater. CalPERS alone. And then now you got the 401k guy. The average 401k, at least a school teacher has a million too. The average 401k guy has 65,000. And so when they, what, what the actuarials do, you know, you know those guys, right? The guys that put the numbers together, they lump in the guy with 1% in with a guy that got nothing. Mm -hmm. And it comes out, every mm -hmm. American's a millionaire because the upper 1% they're so of bloody course, rich. You know? Of course. They lift everybody else up. It looks really good when you average it, you know. But when you look at the case by case, so the average the average 401k guy is 65,000 to 100k when they retire. Now, that's just America. So remember, Paris is rioting right now because they're trying to cut their pensions. Japan's rioting, Hong Kong rioting, Argentina, Indonesia. Everybody's the old guys like me are going to suck the system dry. So if anything's going to bring down the market, it's going to be pensions. Because because I can't get I, w I wish I could get younger, but I can't. So these guys are getting older and older. Every day it goes by, we get closer to the edge, and they're like lemmings, you know. So that's, so that's why my doctor, my medical doctor yeah. says, I should have listened to you 10 yeah. years ago. So well, you still got time. Well, what a person does is what they can do. And since the average person has no financial education, they can't do much. So like, you know, I can short the market. I'll make more, more money as it shorts coming down. So I'm looking forward to it. But the average pensioner, they're handcuffed. They can't get out. If they take the money out, they're penalized 30%. They screwed them. Mm. They screwed everybody. That's Wall Street, the government, and all these guys.
Well, the next book I'm writing was a guy named Jim Rickards. He wrote Currency Wars and all that. <clears> the <throat> next book I'm writing is called The Ravens. And Jim and I see eye to eye, you know, definition of intelligence. He says, you should have gold and you should have silver. You should have museum quality artwork. I don't have any of that. And real estate, income producing real estate. Like you have, I have a friend in Panama. He has an avocado farm. <laughs> He's, he says, I got out of, he's a Canadian, he says, I got out of Canada because Canada's in worse shape than America. And this guy's pretty, he's a, he's a, he's a, you know, a bond trader. So he's sitting in Panama growing avocados, he says, because people have to eat. Another guy's, a friend of mine is growing blueberries. But another friend of mine, he moved up to, he was from Seattle, excuse me. He had a big house, his kids all moved out. So he converted the kids' bedrooms into one-bedroom apartments. So he put a kitchen and he put a toilet inside his little bedrooms. And so he now rents out four bedrooms. He's making more money today than ever before because a lot of workers commute to Seattle. So they come in, they check in, they come in on Sunday night, they check out Friday afternoon. It's at a little house, he's making more money. So the, th the point is everybody can do something, but you gotta figure out what you can do. Wait, like, don't short stocks if you've never shorted a stock because you know how dangerous that be. Uh, short uh, and then it goes up. Yeah, you're, uh, uh, you're out. Well, you and I are educators, really. Mm -hmm. And there's something you should know about you know, technology, all these cameras. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called the Lindy effect. This Nazim Taleb wrote about it. He says, anything that's been new in the last 20 years will be gone in 20 years. What's going to survive is old. So everybody thinks, well, technology is going to make it what survived is old. The reason gold and silver will survive is because it's old. Bitcoin may not survive because it's new. So I'm not saying, I'm not telling you what to buy, I'm just telling you how to think. So Nazim Talib has a book called Anti-Fragile, which is good. Excellent read. Oh, you know, it's fantastic, yeah. he's a smart guy. Oh, yeah. But he writes about, you know, how we have in school today, we're raising snowflakes. Mm -hmm. You have to have safe rooms, you, mm -hmm. can, you can't trigger, you can't say anything, you know. So we're raising a bunch of snowflakes. And it says the guy that's gonna survive is somebody who's not fragile, anti-fragile. So what he says is this, whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger. So he says, when you go to the gym and you pump weights, you, pu you push 100 pounds, that means the next time you push, you might go 105. So bad times will make the strong stronger. And bad times will make the snowflakes weaker. weaker. So the thing is get, you know, as my Mexican friends would say, get some cojones, you know, get some balls out there and get ready for whatever is coming. Don't run and hide and say, oh, Trump should have saved me or Bernie's gonna save me. So the big thing is this anti-fragile is good, but another thing they should know is the bigger something gets, i.e. our banks, the more fragile. And the, and the companies that will survive are like our companies because we're small. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, right? When I, Nazim Talib, anti-fragile, black swan. So you're working for a big company like Google, you might be safe today, but you might be gone tomorrow. Whereas you're a little startup, you might have a better chance. I'm not saying what it is, but there's something everybody can do. Like I said, everybody can buy a $20, $20 silver piece. Everybody can afford 20 bucks, but will they do it? No, they'll be at Starbucks sucking it down instead. You know, I mean, I have, I have several YouTube channels going out. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing, but I have young people doing it for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So I'd be with technology. Now the cameras will be obsolete, but you can buy a new camera. Do, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't invest in the camera. I'd buy a camera, but I wouldn't invest in the company. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's how you think about this right now. So just know that those who are in big companies who think they're safe might be at the most at, at risk. You know, if you're working for Bank of America or Wells Fargo, you might be at risk. And all they're doing is inflaming people. You know what I mean? They just talk about, well, Trump and his zipper, <laughs> you know, immigration and impeachment and all this. It, it does, they can't do anything. And that's why, you know, Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren talks about tax the rich, AOC, tax the rich. Well, I hate to tell you this, but the rich don't pay taxes. <laughs> I covered it in fake. It's, 
it's, it's pretty pathetic, you know, I and mean, it's legal. They would never let me say this on CNBC. MSNBC would never let me say what I'm saying. But now because of YouTube and all these, you know, the, the, the little, little guys equalizer. popping up, yeah. we can say what we want. That's it's right. freedom of speech, except in school where I can't say anything. But anyway, you know, this is the best time of all, but it's also the most dangerous. And that's what Nazim Tal was talking about. If you're anti-fragile, if somebody punches you and you fall down, you go, thank you, I'm going to come coming back stronger. You know, that's kind of what's going to save you. But if you're the guy who is, oh, you have to put me in a safe room can't say anything that triggers me. Whatever those guys, those kids say, you know, I don't want them. You know, they're not going to make it.